Welcome back to another episode of Eve Business Insider. Today we're talking about Citadel ownership as it pertains to access control lists, anchoring, the vulnerability schedule, profiles for these structures, as well as Citadel fittings and services. We're going to be talking specifically about the Raitaru today, which as I've discussed in previous videos, is a great opportunity for uh, perhaps individuals or small corporations to enter the market as producers or as researchers or scientists or whatever you may choose. Excellent bonuses here uh, for all different types of economies. So let's jump right in. So the very first thing we need to do for a Citadel anchoring procedure, of course, is identify the location of the Citadel is as in, in the universe, where would we like to put it? Now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to show you a HiSec Citadel uh, anchoring procedure, but in fact, I think HiSec is not really a very good place to put them, or at least this particular system is definitely not what you want to go with. Unfortunately, HiSec Citadels are going to be pretty contested, and so this type of anchoring procedure is best used for within player controlled space, such as NullSec, or perhaps LowSec, or at least a corner of Empire space where you're not likely to get dunked on. So as we see here, I'm basically just going to right click on this uh, Raitaru in my cargo hold and I'm going to be presented with the deployment dialog window. This illustrates the uh, opportunity to move the structure and of course rotate the structure as well. Uh, and showing the structure in red here means that it's not in a legal position, whereas if it was in a legal position, it would be blue. So there are some additional considerations to think about here, uh, which is the minimum anchoring distance of Raitarus and other structures to other structures in EVE as well as Celestials. And you're going to see in a minute why basically this initial location that I pick is not going to work out for me, uh, and in fact I'm not able to find a position where this Raitaru model uh, turns blue to illustrate that it is able to be anchored in that position. So as you see here, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to anchor it, and in fact by panning and, and scrolling and zooming around, I'm not going to be able to find a location where this Raitaru does go blue uh, anywhere within my controllable radius, which is of course around my ship. You see this small red dotted ring around me, this is the uh, minimum location away from me that I can anchor the Citadel, but in fact even when I try and throw it as far as I can away, there is no valid location for this citadel. So I'm going to have to make a bookmark and then I'm going to go to my bookmark and I'm going to repeat this procedure and I find that as soon as I go outside of that red dotted ring, the citadel is going to go blue and it's going to allow me to anchor the structure. As soon as I click the button to anchor, of course, we will start. So I want to make sure that I rotate the citadel and rotation of citadels is something that I want to talk about for just a minute. Um, because I think the the concept basically of citadel villages is something that you should think about and the rotation of citadels undocks to point to other structures is something very interesting. Now as we see here for the vulnerability schedule, uh, this is pretty unique to this type of structure. We haven't seen this before in EVE Online. So we have a seven day window in which to set a certain number of vulnerability hours. This is the only time the structure can actually be attacked. As well of course at the top we have the opportunity to set the, uh, the name for the structure and the initial profile that will be set. I'm going to miss this in my past and accidentally set the uh, the wrong profile initially, but that's just fine. We can set these at any time. So let's take a look at what uh, what a Citadel might look like with its vulnerability schedule, uh, schedule set. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead and anchor. And uh, this is going to start the process of nano micro assembly that uh, will take 24 hours unless, of course, you're in hostile space or space inhabited by another player organization's uh, iHub, in which case there will be operational delay additional uh, for that. But in fact, in high sec, it's going to take just the 24 hours. So it's been a great video. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. We'll We'll see you tomorrow to see how this uh, sucker comes together. Yeah, totally just kidding. Here we go. So basically, it's a, it's been a day. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is right click on this structure and uh, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the uh, profile settings. Or actually, pardon me, what I'll do first is go through the access control list found from the e-menu. Uh, looks like business there. And then basically, we're going to go into access control list and we're going to take a look at this, uh, what is a relatively new and special dialogue again. So access control lists are going to control different functions, independent functions of the Citadel that include docking access and stuff like that. So I've got one set up already for my corp. I've made a new one for public access and I'm going to click this button to add the public as an entity to it. I'm also going to go ahead and add a new access list um, and I'm going to actually probably make a couple to better illustrate some of the options that we can do here. So let's make a new one first and let's, um, oh I don't know, let's make one perhaps for uh, um, for for Mr. Kriba, I mean we know that he enjoys uh, Citadel, so let's go ahead and make one for him. Or actually first, let's do the Gunner Citadel. So we'll, uh, ACL, sorry, we'll do Gunners first. We'll create that access list, and uh, and then I'm going to go ahead into the Gunner section, and I'm going to add a member to that with the plus button there. And uh, you can do individual search, corporation search, or alliance search in here, which makes this very flexible. But I'm going to go ahead and just search for my other character here. We'll add in Mr. Bokisan, and uh, and let's uh, let's take a look at the admin as well. So there are a few different roles here that I could add, admin and manager, but for the sake of argument, let's just add admin on that one, and uh, and we'll move right along. ACLs, you don't need to save in between, that's going to go ahead and automatically save. So as I've said, let's make a new one 
props for uh, for Mr. Kriba. He's a great dude. I like him a lot. I think we should let him dock in our Citadel. So let's go ahead and add one for him. And as well, I'm going to go ahead into that Kriba access list, add the member. And of course, as you would expect, I mean, I could add some results, but I don't know them. Let's uh, let's go ahead and add Mr. Kriba. So now we have a few access lists that are uh, different and they're going to allow us to distinguish between uh, individuals, corps, or alliances in the universe for the purposes of docking and other facilities of the Citadel. So let's take a look at how that comes together in a profile. Now by right clicking on the structure, I'm going to find the option here for uh, edit profile used by structure. It does hide. I think you can also get to it from the structure list, but this is the uh, the way that I prefer to do it. This is going to pop open the profile window under my structures, and I'm going to be able to go ahead and configure uh, the profile itself, which is of course an amalgamation of different ACLs. So I'm going to name this profile something that uh, sort of makes sense as if to leave myself breadcrumbs later. I don't want to name it ASD ASD because that would be confusing AF. And then uh, for each of these uh, different types of facilities, you're going to have the option to go ahead and hit the plus button, add an ACL or multiple ACLs, and then uh, just a good habit to get into, hit that save button in between switching screens. So in the case of corporation offices, you're going to see here how we're able to distinguish between individuals or groups inside of these ACLs and how we can uh, sort of affect them differently with our price schematic. So for public access, for example, on corporation offices, I'm going to go ahead and set an arbitrary value. I don't know, let's charge them 50 million. That seems like that would earn us a lot of money. Uh, for my own corporation, I'm going to go ahead and set, you know, maybe 10 million so I can do a reduction for myself if I would like to, or my friends perhaps. And then for Kriba, let's go ahead and give him free offices. Yay, Kriba! Now for defense, I'm going to set only gunners, and uh, we'll get into another in another video why that's important. But for Clone Bay, we're going to go ahead and set up again one of each of three uh, ACLs to allow all these different individual entities or groups to go ahead and uh, and use cloning at this facility. And then again, I can set a different price regime for each of these groups. So let's go perhaps 1 million for public. Uh, for my own corp, I don't know, let's go 10,000 or something. And for Kreba, he can have clones for free. He's, again, great guy. Let's let him uh, clone here anytime he wants to. Now for industry, same thing again, but this is going to be a percentage base that uh, applies to all jobs that you set, similar to the tax. And in fact, it will be calculated at the same time as the normal, uh, pardon me, industry uh, cost index. So those two will roll together in terms of the cost for the member. But as you can see here, perhaps we'll set one and then a half percent and then zero percent for Mr. Kribasan. Now for uh, market, again, it's a percentage basis. You want to keep these relatively low, especially if you're planning to have people use them because they will really stack up. So we're going to go 2% public, 1% MyCorp, and uh, and Kriba again will go zero. So really, we're going to let him, this is a Kriba free port here. We love Kriba. And so we're going to go ahead and set uh, public access again on reprocessing as well as MyCorp as well as Kriba. But I mean, we know how much this guy loves Veldsbar. So, uh, so we'll basically sucker him in and we're going to go 2% reprocessing for the public, one for MyCorp, and then I don't know, let's go five for Mr. Kriba. And uh, we can get some of that dank Veldsbar monies. So we'll go ahead and save this out. And the next thing that we're going to do uh, is take a look basically at the um, at the actual profile used by the structure and so I will have to go back in and assign this profile which I've just created to actually be used by the Raitaru. So what we'll do here is uh, just save out and then you're gonna see I'm gonna right click we're gonna go to uh, again edit profile used by structure and then what we're gonna do is uh, tab over to the structure itself we're gonna give that a right click and then we're going to be able to uh, set the actual profile used. And of course, we're going to change that over to the one we want to use for this lesson, the one we just created. Windows going to blink, and that's going to indicate, of course, that the structure has switched over onto the new profile. And there is a brief delay on this. It takes a couple of minutes to update. So now let's go ahead and dock, and we're going to go ahead and take control of this Citadel in order to uh, fit it out and add the fuel to it and stuff like that. This does require being on that gunner ACL, uh, as well as a corporate role. So of course, make sure that you've got both of those. Next thing you're going to do is open your inventory once you're in the screen looking at the Citadel and your fitting window. This is going to behave a lot like a ship. I'm just going to drag the fuel into the fuel bay, and then we're going to take a look at some of these service modules. So I'm adding these into the bottom slots, an additional slot specifically for Citadels for service modules. And these are consuming a little bit of fuel for each one, both for onlining and for uh, for maintenance over time. Now, in terms of modules, I'm just going to go ahead and drag those on the very same you would. Uh, and unfortunately, in the case of HiSec, this particular overpowered uh, module I've talked about before called the Stand-Up Guided Bomb Launcher is not able to be used. But hey, I'll save this one. I'll use it for uh, a low sec or NullSec Citadel. No big deal. I would suggest a uh, armament loadout. I'll give you a link in the description for a Raitaru that I think offers a good kind of balance of offense and defense. And uh, and that's pretty much it. You've got your Citadel online. You have your modules online. You have your services online. Your profile is correctly applied. 
And, uh, and that's basically all you need to do for this structure uh, in order to allow other people to use it, as well as yourself, and gain full benefit from the bonuses of this Raitaru. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, obviously, Citadels are a great piece of New Eden, and although they are somewhat complex, I hope that this video helps you to sort out their, uh, their sort of uh, docking and, and different access level mechanics. Of course, make sure you like and subscribe, and as well, if you can uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell, turn on the notifications for my video that make sure you get them on day one. That's going to be it for now. Peace out, New Eden. I'll be back very soon. Thank <laughs> you.